Hey, here I am. It is almost morning here. Um, it would be brunch time. Except for me, brunch time is still breakfast time. I just had my cereal. I wanted to rant a little bit about something very weird. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I noticed on what happened to them in Central and South America. I need to talk a little bit about safety in this area of the world. There are safe ways and unsafe ways to go about everything here. If you know who I am, I'm Suzanne Tukumar. I used to have a column called No Longer Quivering. I wrote daily. A place called Patheos published it. These are just my opinions. Don't believe I'm to talk about. Don't believe any cops here at all. I had something super scary happen last night. I mean, crazy scary. The worst thing I've had. And that's the reason that I'm still in around my nightgown this morning. I'm trying to chase down bits of, of adult cereal out of my mouth. I hate being an adult for one thing and one thing alone. You have to eat this cereal that tastes like hay with cinnamon on it. Adulting sucks. So last night I had a, a big, scary bit of adulting that kind of fits with what I'm going to talk about a little bit. Okay. Our gate broke yesterday. Usually what happens, we go in, we go out, we got our gate remote, you hit the button, the gate opens. You hit the button, the gate closes. This, the gate stopped responding to any of these, and we have like six of them here. I've got one here on my desk. So we had the gate propped open because we had a lot of people coming in and out. We had the pool guys coming in and out. We had friends coming in and out. We had a bunch of stuff going on, and we even ran to the store and left the gates open, which is okay. I just locked the house up. And with the house and the cabina locked up, our guest house, there's not a whole lot of damage they could do. They could steal my brand new elliptical. That's about it. <laughs> Shells. They could steal plants. That's about it. There's not a whole lot sitting out that would be easy to steal and that would be easy to conceal. Steal and conceal. One of the things that you always have to keep in mind when traveling in Central South America and Latin America is that petty crime is everywhere here. Um, it's always crimes of opportunity, petty stuff that people do. That is the stuff that you get hit with here. Okay, so we had everything opened up yesterday. Nobody came through. Our Across the street, neighbors are building another extension on their house. So I got to listen to equipment, the uh, equipment there. And we had another neighbor that came in to talk to us that him and my husband had a long conversation because somebody is building right behind us. They're demanding that we put in a drainage system that drains our drain water away from them which is silly because we're sitting on a property like this and all of our water goes under the, the fence. So if they're not, if they're building below us, they got a problem and it's not ours. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people coming and going last night, my husband at Twilight said, well, I'm going to go to the Spanish language service at my church, his church, not mine. I will never again go to a non-denominational church ever. Not a safe place, but he's still there. He's still buying the BS that they're shoveling on. And I said, okay. Figured he'd only be gone like an hour or so, because he usually isn't gone very long with these things. Said, I'm going to keep the gate open. I was kind of like, yeah, well, it's getting dark out. So I sat up last night in my rocking chair. We're having a view of the television and the front gate. So I'm sitting there last night, sitting, 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 watching TV, working on my latest crochet project. And all of a sudden, you see this. If I can get my crappy cell phone to do this. Let me see. Yeah, all of a sudden, I see this. In the distance. 
by the gate. And I can see by it moving around that they were in the gate. They weren't just at the gate. They were behind the wall. They had come into the property. And there were several of them. I saw one of them started to come right up to the house. So you know me, machete, whipped out my machete in one hand, grabbed the flashlight with the, uh, well, grabbed this and turned on the flashlight function with the other, and went out there to confront them, okay? Because that's one thing I can tell you here in Latin America is if somebody is sneaking around trying to do some kind of little crime of opportunity, you can you should shut them down by just walking out and spoiling their fun, which is what I did last night. They don't know. They don't know I'm, that I'm a crazy woman with a machete. As soon as they help me with the machete, they all like split straight out the door. And I called Jim and said, get your ass back home. You've got to come here. We got to do something besides leave the door open all night so that you can come and go for your stupid church services. But a um, couple things. Number one, my cat Stinky went with me. I went out to confront these guys. He was right at my side running with me. And I had no balance problems. I was running with a machete in my hands. It's looking back and I was like, that's probably the stupidest thing I could have done. But I was so filled with adrenaline that apparently had good balance. I was so filled with adrenaline. I went out there and did it. And now I'm paying the price because I re-injured my ankle. I've had such problems with. So I'm sitting around today in my nightgown with my hair up, not doing a damn thing. So when you're in Central or South America, I, I saw that on on my Reddit today, people complaining about seeing someone robbed in broad daylight in front of right in front of them. I'm just gonna say there are a lot of things that you can do to keep yourself from being a victim. Now last night. That was on my husband for not closing the gate before he left. I told him that we can keep it we can keep it open all day when we're here. It's not a big deal. We can see everybody coming and going. But once nighttime hits and we're right down the street from a bar, it's not a good idea. You're just it's just an attractive um, an attractive nuisance. Somebody will come in there. So you got to use common sense here. It's something that I've learned. You don't run around. I've seen so many times with tourists here that they will run around flashing the latest iPhone instead of the this, the cheapest thing you can buy here. Um, they'll run around with expensive jewelry on, expensive cameras, not so much expensive cameras now, I guess that, and an iPad in one hand and all of that, and look like tourists. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people lose their iPhones on the beach. You don't lose your i you don't leave your iPhones and your hotel room key on the beach unattended. But every day I hear about this. But the worst thing, because you hear about this all the time, if you look like a tourist, you are in Latin America is like rob me on your forehead. If you don't look like a tourist, you won't get robbed. And there are some places where it's not safe to be a tourist at all. Most of the time in the tourist areas, while there are those little thieves looking for that opportunity, looking for you to put down your iPhone for a half a second so they can steal it, uh, you're actually safer there than many other places because at least there, the policia will be there and they will have a uh, at least an attempt to pretend that they're doing some kind of something about the crime in the area. Crime has gone up tremendously here since, and throughout Latin America, since COVID started. Why? Because, well, we shut down here for like three or four months. I mean, just shut down everything except the doctor's offices, the pharmacies, and the, and the, Part of policing is presence. Java man, you were so right. That's why I said, don't look like a tourist, but being in the tourist areas is safest because they have the presence of the police. They're right there most of the time walking around, even though they may not be doing much or they may not look like they're doing much. Just the presence will shut them down. They actually built a police station here in Tamarindo finally because for a long time they were operating out of a beat-up Winnebago. <laughs> Now we actually have a legitimate 
brick and mortar police station. So that's a big thing. Be a tourist, but don't be the obnoxious gringo tourist is <laughs> the best way to, to say it. Um, uh, yeah, so don't be the gringo tourist. If you do catch somebody trying to rip you off like that, remember, crime of opportunity, a lot of times they say, hey, no, don't do that. But that's enough to let make them put it down and go because they don't want to be caught either. They don't want to go to jail. Jail here is not like jail in the States. I saw this um, program on Netflix called The World's Toughest Jails, and they had one of the ones they had was one near San Jose here. It's supposed to be one of the worst jails in the world. Got to pay for your own food. Got to pay for your own clothing. There's huge amounts of gang activity. There's no clean water or anything. You just are out of luck if you don't have the money to pave your way and you're there. Sam Bankman Freed doesn't like jail or him. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, he wouldn't. Um, Jail here sucks. It's not It's not a luxury in any way, shape, or form. It's not even the basic level of life that you see in U.S. jails. At least there, you're getting three hots and a cot, and you're getting medical care if, if you're sick. You're not getting that here. You're not getting any of that. From what I heard in prison in North Korea, inmates use rats for food. Yeah, that sounds about right. I was going to say, during the worst of the pandemic here, when everything was shut down and the locals were not making any money, the Ticos weren't, and the government was giving them like $25 a week to eat on, the iguanas disappeared. The iguana population is still not rebounded back like it once was because so many people ate iguanas. And we're not talking in jail. These are regular guys. I experienced it during COVID because an iguana fell out of a tree on my property when the pool guys were here. And they're all Nikos. They're from Nicaragua, which means that the Ticos can pay them nothing or next to nothing because they're not legal. They're like, <laughs> we would consider um, like what we used to consider Mexicans in the U.S., that they do the work that nobody else wants to do, and you can pay them whatever you want. Well, that's how it is with Nikos here. So they caught this enormous iguana because it fell out of the tree 40 feet and was stunned. So they're holding this four or five foot iguana. The next thing I know, you know, one of the Nikos asked me, Eduardo asked me for, they said, let me borrow your machete and, a, and I need a plastic gar, uh, grocery bag, two plastic grocery bags. I said, okay. So I gave them better than cannibalism. Even though they say people taste like chicken, <laughs> I think about eating a person. If it came down to it, you probably could, but I wouldn't want to do it. So he chopped that iguana's head off with my machete and started dressing the iguana. And I'm like, mm, try not to throw up because I, I love seeing these good four and five feet iguanas on the property. And I've seen very few of them lately. Very few compared to what they, and we've all talked about it here. The iguana population is severely low because the Ticos have eaten so many of them when they had no, no money or no food. And a friend of mine ran the local food bank, and they actually had to go out of business. They ran out of food. They ran out of contributions. They ran out of everything because the need was so great at that time. So finally, the government unlocked because of need. Uh, hola. Cheapskate. Finally, the government started giving people a little bit of money and everything reopened. So no harm, no foul. But as a result, we've been left with a little bit more crime. And I didn't sleep a wink last night until like three in the morning because I was so hepped up on adrenaline. You're chasing the guy off with the two guys off with the machete. I'm sure that was the last thing they expected to see was an old granny with a machete. So we have a lot of people on the Reddit travel list who are traveling in Latin America and like, God, they robbed so-and-so five feet from me in the middle of the day. Don't look like a tourist. Don't flash money. And then people were saying things like, always carry a dummy wallet and a dummy phone. Nobody here wants these. Um, I don't know that that's the answer. I don't think that's even a very good answer. 
Here's what I'm going to tell you what your number one thing you need to watch out for here, here in Costa Rica and probably other places from what I'm reading. Most of the time, if you're in the tourist area, there, there is a police presence. So you actually are safer in a lot of ways. But at the same time, you have to be careful of the police. I think they're the biggest threat. They're a bigger threat than the guys who want to lift your iPhone or they were coming on here to steal God knows what. We have had a couple of little minor things taken here by people uh, coming over the wall, coming around the wall like a leaf blower because we don't keep anything outside. In the Netherlands, they told me if you can prove that a bicycle at a flea market was stolen from you, you get a discount. <laughs> a discount? <laughs> Instead of the bike back? I don't keep a bicycle here. It would just run off, I'm sure. So I keep very little, very little anything here out on the deck. I have a table that's too big to be moved in the chairs, and that's about it. We've got heavy furniture that would be impossible to heft over the wall or if you hauled it through the gate all of my neighbors would see it so we try to be like that you just have to use a whole lot of common sense but i think the bigger danger here especially and mexico because i was just reading somebody saying they got picked up twice by the policia in mexico and the first one said that he had broken some kind of public drunkenness law and he owed $400 and he didn't have that on him. So they drove him to the sketchiest ATM in the middle of nowhere to get this $400 and he got it and gave it to him. And then they dumped him. And as he walking back to catch a cab, to go back to his Airbnb, he got picked up by a different set of policemen for a similar crime. And they were trying to also shake him down for another three or $400 for public intoxication. They took him to a different sketchy ATM, forced him to take the money out, and uh, he had to walk back to them because they, you know, make you go away from them so that you're not, they're not seen on the ATM camera with you. So he had to walk across the street and stuff. And um, he saw a taxi came along and jumped in the cab seat, taxi and, and got away from the, the policia. Uh, that's a sad fact of tourists in Latin America. Sometimes the policia are the ones shaking you down. Meanwhile, on Twitter, Elon told the advertisers to go F themselves, a rather unusual business strategy. Elon Musk, I don't know what's going on in here, but, you know, he really screwed everything up on so many ways on, can't get back on my Twitter. I got my Twitter on my old computer. I was able to log in there just fine, even though I didn't have the password. Maybe he inhaled too much rock. That could be. So... When I set my Twitter, this newest Twitter account up three years ago, because I had one eons ago that I never even used, but I couldn't remember the password to get back on. Um, so when I set this new one, I set it to an odd email of mine, and I set it up with two-factor authentication. So when I got this new computer I'm on now... <laughs> I logged into everything, and I logged into my Google account. I logged into my Facebook. I logged into everything that I had the passwords for. I thought, well, my browser should have my password for my Twitter because it's the same browser I'm using on the old one, and it saves my passwords. Is the secret password one, two, three, four, five? Uh -uh, space balls? No, Java man. And no, it is not my husband's most common password that I forced him to stop using. Password. Who uses password as a password? My husband did until I said, you're just begging for somebody to hack you and take your shit. <laughs> um, so, no. So I can't, I can't access it now. It was two-factor authentication. I, law, I, I don't even use that email anymore. It was an email connected to a business account Why I closed the business account and I don't have the email anymore. I don't have access to the email address. The other problem is, is when I fell out of the airplane in, in June, when I fell down the steps, I had my old cracked out iPhone in my bag and it fell out. 
And I'm sure of it because I had just had it on the plane. I was looking at something and, and then we landed. I put it in my bag. And by the time I got to my car, it was gone. It was old and cracked out. It was like a seven or iPhone seven or eight. That is the stupidest password. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and I know people have used that as their luggage, their luggage lock with code, which is stupid because the Homeland Security will just break into your suitcase anyway. TSA, I should say, not Homeland Security. So here, you pay as you go with your cell phones. You just load your chip every now and then. So when the fell in my purse, I lost the chip. So I couldn't even access the same phone number. So it was connected to the phone. It was connected to an old email address. And there was no way. So I keep reaching out to Twitter and going, Hey, yeah, uh, this email address, this phone number, blah, blah, blah. And they keep saying, you can't authenticate who you are. So they're not letting me back my old account. So I'm going to have to close it down or restart an account. I hate doing that, but I guess I should keep my passwords written down a whole lot better than I do. Two-factor authentication. And here's where it gets stupid and where Elon is involved. After all this jumping around and everything else, it turns out that if you are not paying for your X check, you know, your X check mark, you're not allowed to have two-factor authentication. So I cannot even get back into my account in any way, shape, or form except on the old computer. I have Firefox. And that is how I've usually done it. And that's how usually when I reopen Firefox on a new computer, it just transfers those passwords over like a heartbeat. And I never have to think about it. It didn't do that with, with X this time, with Twitter. And so I'm having to jump through some hoops and they're not cooperative. They're telling me, we don't know you, blah, blah, blah. Well, he has to make up that money after tell advertising to themselves. He absolutely does. But um, so I have a completely new phone number. I have a cheap little what is this, a blue phone? I think it's called BLU. And everything is switched over. And I've been able to at least call a couple places like Amazon that I had two-factor authentication and I don't have access to any of that crap anymore and say, hey, yeah, it's me. Here's my credit card number. Here's the number on the back and prove that it was me and get right back in. The only one that has been the problem has been I'm willing to use every last penny of Elon Musk's money to save Twitter. Java man, you gotta ask too. Twitter, Twitter to X. To get to X, you had to put twitter.com. And my Firefox keeps reading X is Twitter. And every morning I log in and there's a bright cherry little blue bird and it says Twitter. <laughs> you click and go and it's like X. Okay, sounds like they ripped it off for my stupid kiss song, X. <laughs> but yeah, it's all of that plays a thing. So let me go back to the Felicia, how you handle them. Because they, they will shake you down. Here, the shakedown is a little bit different. But it's still applicable if you're traveling anywhere in Latin America. And I would advise doing this if you're traveling anywhere, okay? Anywhere. If somebody can grab a hold of your passport, they can cause you all kinds of problems. Here, the most common type of police shakedown is they will ask to see your passport. If you hand over your passport to them, and it's not like a large stop where there's all kinds of cops and it's legitimate, they will shake you down, especially if you're on a back road. There's a road that goes between Tamarindo in um, Santa Cruz, that road is notorious for this. I've heard and seen so many tourist stories of this. Driving, lone cop pulls you over and says, hey, let me see your passport. You know, you were speeding back there. You got a tail light out. Some made up stupid thing that they can't prove. And you're like, Joe Gringo, so you're handing over your passport going, okay, here you go. And say. Ooh, you broke this law, committed this crime. The fine is $1,600. 
Well, to be fair, that's the most expensive one I've heard of coming out of these guys. But uh, I've also heard as low as 20. So it's a sw sliding scale of how much money they think you have on you and how rich you are and how much of a rich gringo tourist do you look like. And keep in mind, in Latin America, everyone is going to assume if you are from the USA that you are wealthy, even if you don't have the pot to pee in and the window to throw it out of. They're going to assume that. And maybe compared to them, you are. I don't know. Because I, I do know there's a lot of very uh, impoverished gringos and surfers here. So long story short, don't ever hand over that passport. What you do here and anywhere in the world where they want your passport, we carry printout of the ID page of our passport on one, and then we put it back in and we put the current, the current uh, visa sticker, the stamp, the visa stamp, because it shows how many days you were allowed in country. And they have to see when that was stamped and how many days they've given you. Now they've changed it here from three months to six months. So that's a good thing now. That's a new thing they came down with. But if you don't have the passport over to you, just hand them the printout and they tell you, hey, you got to pay us X amount of dollars. It's like, mm, no, I don't. And Jim laughed at me one time because we were driving. One of them pulled me over and tried that nonsense after I showed him only the printout. And I just said, nope, and kept on going. I started my car up and drove off. And of course, they're not going to chase you because what they're doing is illegal. They're trying to shake you down for money. So give them a hundred bazillion Zimbabwe. <laughs> I would think I'm going to print out my check that I have. One of my checks from my old scam baiting days and hand it over to him says $16 million drawn on the first bank of Nigeria. <laughs> Could do that, I guess along with our printouts, but don't give them the, do not give them the passport. They have to accept your driver's license from the States. It's perfectly valid here. And the printout. And that passport needs to stay locked in your hotel safe while you're here. People steal them who are not the police and sell them passport card is safe it's perfectly safe to carry your passport card with you because if they say sixteen hundred dollars that passport card you're gonna be going yeah no <laughs> and and running and driving off so uh, that's really the most important thing and don't be surprised if you don't get some weird appeal shakedowns we had one that they appealed to us and i found out later it's a common scam of theirs, the police here. But we were only out about 10 mil, which is about $18. So, oh, well. We had we were pulled over. In fact, it was right after I had my little difficulties and was in the hospital, like, almost two years ago. We drove up. We are driving back from Liberia. We're on the main drag, Rutus 21, and get pulled over and we're like oh my goodness what do we do what do we do and i'm stumbling looking for our printouts and the cop you know rolls down the window and tells us he doesn't speak english he tells us in spanish which is fine and he hands us a folder he hands us a folder and said and we opened the folder and the inside there was a sheet of paper where it said that the police station did not have a working septic system, that the septic tank had failed and they were trying to raise money to put in a septic system. So we gave them a 10 mil note, which I said was about $18 and kind of laughed and went our way. We've since found out that that's a really common scam here, apparently. But $18 versus $1,600 shaken down because I they want my passport is is a way different. Now I gotta say this the cops in Tamarendo and the cops in Villarreal here, they don't do that. They're pretty decent. 
I'm talking about the the, the transitos that patrol, patrol the highways here. They're the ones with the highest levels of corruptions of what I've seen. Tell them to use a port john I think they were using a port john We kind of laughed. We just thought it was so funny we had to give them some money. I mean, you never see that in the U.S., somebody begging for money to put in a something, something tank. And there is no, well, that's the other thing I didn't rant about here. There is no such thing here as um, community sewage. You know how the states, every town has their sewage system. We don't have that here. Everybody has septic tanks. Everybody, everybody, everybody. We've got a septic tank. Um, got a drain field. I wonder if the guy building behind us knows that our drain field runs right up to the edge of his property. <laughs> So, because we're so close to the ocean here, in rainy season, you will smell the smell of the septic tanks everywhere, especially right on the ocean. And there are some beaches where they actually, where there's still people who have shacks that dump their raw sewage right into the water. So, I always tell people, don't get into the ocean here unless you have no cuts, because if you get in and you have some kind of open wound, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. As my doctor says, if you do that, you, you have to put you on three different antibiotics to kill whatever it is. In the U.S., they would crowdsource funding for that. Yeah, they would. Maybe that's what Elon needs to do. He needs to crowdsource fixing X. <laughs> Dear Elon, please give us Twitter back. I want my cheerful blue bird. I want when it goes wrong, the graphic of the blue birds pulling on the Pull it on the threads, lifting the whale up. I don't like this X thing. It seems like some kind of hostile, hyper-masculinity ridiculousness. If you're still using the server name Twitter, you should go back to Twitter. Restore Twitter to what it once was. Give us Twitter back, please. I read a while ago that core communities in Mississippi have a problem with funding for sewage infrastructure. I'm sure they do, Java Man. HBO has had a se series of, of really good documentaries on that part of the world, particularly as you get closer to Memphis. Some of those communities are extremely poor. I mean, there are levels of poverty in Mississippi you would not believe. The other night I was watching YouTube, and I like to watch, since I'm living here, the ones where they show how badly certain communities have deteriorated. Interestingly enough, Detroit is actually starting to come back after kind of hitting rock bottom and rolling around in it a while and scraping along. They're actually coming back, and I'm tempted to buy a house there and restore it just to have a place that I can Airbnb out. But I, I want to see what happens there. But Mississippi, the one that shocked me the most was they had done a video on um, – I know Gary's been problematic. I don't know if they've turned it around. The one that I saw that shot me the most was Jackson, Mississippi. Now, when I used to drive down from D.C. to see my mama in rural Louisiana, a lot of times, well, when we used to see my husband's family in Baton Rouge, we would take 59 all the way down until it hit um, I-12 and they take I-12 into Baton Rouge. Well, my mother lives north of Baton Rouge in a small little town that's um, all gated communities and golf courses where everybody from Baton Rouge who has money has been fleeing the south or north. And she's in the north part of that. And so I discovered that instead of going on 59 to hang a, <clears throat> hang a right in uh, Meridian, Drive on over to Jackson, Mississippi, and then head dead south and go past my um, place where I went to school for a while, in Chattawa, Mississippi, and go through, um, I want to say Brookdale, and then go down into Louisiana that way because it's quicker to get there to her house that way. So I used to drive through Jackson on the regular, stop sometimes and eat there, and it looked like every other southern town. It looked like Many parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Georgia never gave it much thought. Well, this video the other day, the guy was saying, and he was showing us crime statistics. Jackson is just about 
had the highest murder rates in all of the U.S. per capita. They beat D.C., Baltimore. They beat all the places that you know that they have high rates in, Los Angeles. And I was really shocked to see the per capita murders for Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where I lived for some years. It was number five on the list. It was like, what? Apparently, it's all drug trafficking and everything nowadays in the Deep South, the drugs and poverty. But the Mississippi, parts of Mississippi have gone to such a hell of a handbasket. I couldn't believe Jackson. The roads need to be completely repaved. They're way worse than Costa Rica, and the roads here are crazy because of the weather. Six months of rainy season does a number on the roads here, especially the unpaved ones, like the one right outside my gate. It's unpaved. And there are times when you have to dodge potholes big enough to take a bath in. Not all the time, but many times you have to do that. And like I said, a couple of, like a month or so ago, I was driving, got rerouted because there was a cartel killing at a, at a bar and they had closed down the main intersection going through Villarreal and leading to Tamarin. They closed that down. So that's like a crucial point you have to drive through. There's not many ways around that. And we had to take the back roads, and that's usually not a problem, but it's rainy season, and I had to ford a river in that tiny little car of mine, and I was freaking out. I was the one driving, so of course I'm freaking out. Made it across, even though I could feel my wheels on the right side. I didn't work crunching anything at one point. It was all water underneath the right side of the car. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to flip over and drown. Um, so, Delva, man, I don't understand what's going on in the U.S. right now. It seems like every place is just gone to hell in a handbasket. Um, I just don't get it. What part of, when did we stop taking at least basic care of each other and ourselves? I mean, I don't get it. And I used to think that some of the places near where I live, Richmond in particular, were completely horrible. But I've since had to shift my thought process on that. Kensington in Philadelphia seems to be just hell on a hand, hand basket. And I don't quite understand why things have gotten so bad since COVID. Has, except that maybe it's like here, people don't have enough money. Then when they get their government payouts, they don't spend it on Reaganomics. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I, I know a lot of people that just love Reagan as a president. I hated him. I hated him because he ended all of the um, grants that I was using to pay for my college education. He made my, he personally made my life a lot harder when I had to work all kinds of crazy ass jobs just to have the money to get a degree. The end result of several decades of Reaganomics. Yeah, I would buy that. But here's the thing. How can we let our brothers and sisters live like that? I guess I'm just the leading heart liberal all the time on all this. I mean, it's even even these Tikas I'm talking about. I hire. Just had a gardening crew come through here. I paid them five mil an hour, about ten dollars an hour for each guy. Standard wages here are three mil an hour, which is roughly about like. Four fifty an hour. The changes don't show up at first. It takes a while to work through the system. Java man, that is extremely true. The only reason that mine showed up right away is they were financial, and they had to do with me going to college. It had to do with how I funded my college education. But um, anything else would have taken a while. And there are large swaths of the deep south that is just uh, an embarrassment. You know, I, I don't know how we got to that point besides Reaganomics. You can't have subclasses of people who are not educated and have no way of earning a living and then punish them for that. You can't do that. If you're not going to help people get a hand up to get out, you had to be prepared for some kind of like basic level of sustenance. You have to. And to not offer that, I don't know. 
It's a good thing I'm not president because things would be way different than with the last couple of ones. I, I would be doing it way differently. And yeah, that's just where I am with all this crap this morning. I'm just ready to, I'm ready to stay here forever. Even if we have guys that will come and try to break in and steal my leaf blower, which is the only thing of real value that um, the opportunity thieves have gotten. That and the time that I was at the beach and somebody went through my medicine bag where I keep an extra EpiPen, a um, portable nebulizer. I keep vials of my neb fluid. I keep um, a little vial of Benadryl and other stuff like that. And I had a little tiny as like bottle, bottle of aspirin that I had like three Xanax in it. Because if you have asthma, you'll have, if it's bad enough to use the EpiPen or get even close, you'll have a panic attack. Well, somebody rifled through my bag. It's happened twice since I've been here. So I lock up now. And the only thing they took was the Xanax. So I learned a lesson. Don't keep anything, any real, anything you get high off of. And that's kind of funny because in the States last summer when I ran out of, what was it last, what was it two summers ago? Two summers ago. When I ran out of my Lyric, I had a real hard time getting it in the States because apparently everybody uses it to make their high better now, to increase it that and um, Neurontin. So when you have, and you cannot fight the desire for drugs with laws. It doesn't work. You can't legislate that out. That takes more education and support. And I say this as someone who had a cousin die recently from drug abuse. We thought it was, I didn't hear any details on it for a long, long time. Assumed he had just, his alcoholism had caught up with him. But no, that's not what happened. He got, he got fentanyl. He got into some fentanyl somehow. So it was an OD. And fentanyl's for sure a problem. They keep screaming about people bringing it in through the southern border. I think that if they want to hit yeah, another gift from the Reagan administration. It doesn't work. The war on drugs doesn't work because you cannot legislate human desires. You just can't do it. So uh, the war on fentanyl, fentanyl needs to be stopped. But everybody keeps screaming, southern border, southern border. I think we need to lean on the manufacturers in China. I mean, if you're really going to, you're serious about shutting this down, go right to the source. And if you have to, put economic pressures. Economic pressures are a whole lot more likely to work than any amount of trying to catch it coming across the border. And you're always going to get some kind of clever bootkins like Walter White, who's always going to be able to take some kind of something and make it into something else. That was the thing that just really blew my mind about Breaking Bad. And I asked a friend of mine who's been in recovery for some time who used to be addicted to meth. And she said that a lot of the show was very true to what the meth, the meth world looks like. Senator Day O'Connor cast a decision vote deciding vote on Bush versus Gore Lecter, Cita Lito. Yet another gift from the Reagan administration. Yeah, yeah. I saw she passed up there. No idea she's still alive. I thought she passed a long time ago. And Alito, okay, I got to rant about this just a little bit. My daughter went to, my daughter and my son, my kids went to George Mason University near D.C. in Northern Virginia, okay. My daughter was working there when they came up with the Anthony Sc Scalia School of Law and something else. So anyway, they voted on this and the name and the logos and everything. And then when they released it, all of us were laughing because it was ASS Law. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, 
did you not think about this? Did you not think about how this is going to be a huge internet meme that we were just all going to laugh and point at George Mason University for doing this crap to their law school? I don't know, man. I don't know, Java man. This is just too much crazy going on for all of this stuff. And Biden hadn't been able to put anybody on the Supreme Court. Neither neither was Obama able to put him in. Obama had podiatry law. Neither neither did Obama. He had some opening. He had an opening he could have filled. And it's kind of funny because Merrick Garland is starting to look kind of liberal right now compared to some of the people that are on there. I'm afraid of what's going to happen if certain people get back in power. I really am because, like I said, I kept getting full cavity search every time I fly when that person was in office. I don't even want to say their name. And some of the noise they're making about some of the laws they're going to enact just scare the hell out of me. You know, that's one thing I miss terribly. I don't know about you, Java Man, but I miss it. I miss having a functioning government where people could talk to each other, where liberals and conservatives could talk and reach a consensus on stuff instead of all this demonizing each other. We need to get back to that. We need to get back to being able to talk to each other and iron this stuff out, solve the problems that are going on. Sure enough, there are a lot of problems in the country. I'm not giving up on it, but I'm going to tell you something. My life here is, even with deal, even with chasing a guy with a machete last night, is better. Even Reagan talked to the Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill. I know, and Tip had some, had some respect for him, for the dignity of his office. But that was an interesting read. I don't know if you read it, but um, Boehner wrote a book a couple of years ago, and um, it was one of the most interesting things I've I've read. I, I read it and I had kind of a sneaking suspect for uh, Boehner that I didn't have before. Before, you know, just hearing all the gossip of the um, taxi drivers in D.C. If you want to know what any politician is like and you're in D.C., ask a cab driver. They will tell you all of the dirt, the dirt galore. And Vader had a reputation for being a little bit fond of his liquor. And he posed on his cover with a glass of wine. So he sure enough did enjoy himself. A refreshing adult beverage every now and then at least. But it was an interesting book. But he talked about that. He talked about getting out of politics because you could no longer reach across the aisle and talk to your Talk to your opponent, the not opponent, the on all the side. The progression of the GOP presidents, Reagan, George H. W. Bush, George W. Bush, Trump. Yeah, that's sad. I kind of like George H. W. Bush. And I kind of like George H. W. Bush. Couldn't stand Reagan because of what he'd done to me. I like the next guy. George W. Bush, I wasn't too fond of him at the time. Now I'm looking back at him with almost like nostalgia going, oh, yeah, he wasn't too bad. I don't know why I was throwing a fit about that. And here's the thing. You really have to you really have to support whoever is the president. I mean, that's one thing I don't like about the factionalism. Even when W. was in power and I didn't, wasn't too crazy about it, I was like, you got to support the president. You have to. Can't say, not my president. I'm not praying for him. If you're a Christian and you're doing praying, you should be praying for whoever is in that seat. Even if you think they're an idiot, you still pray for them to have wisdom, judgment, various things. You don't just say, throw up your hands, go, I give up. I don't like this guy. And I was just talking on Reddit, Herman Cain Awards, my favorite subreddit about everything that had gone down during Trump, during COVID. About everything that had gone down during Trump, during COVID. And 
how Chris Christie is now determined to let not let Trump get back into office. Well, it only took him just about dying for that to happen. It didn't take Trump humiliating him. It didn't all these other things didn't dissuade him. It took Trump just about damn near killing him by exposing him to COVID at close contact when he was doing debate prep for Trump to turn him. So, yeah, I know. I know I have a lot of people who watch me. They're conservative. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm talking about your favorite guy. He is not mine. And I think we ought to get back to some people in the center on both sides. I'm just going to say that. You can't govern by extremes. It just doesn't work. And we need to fix this drug problem. And the way to fix the drug problem, I think, is education and support. It's not going to be throwing people in jail. Okay, I better go. I've been rambling. My husband will probably be back any second from church going. My husband will probably be back any second from church going. Why are you still in your nightgown? Why did you not get dressed? Well, dude, I messed up my leg again last night. And that was what was funny. When I had adrenaline run, running through my veins last night, I ran without balance issues and I ran without feeling my glitchy ankle with the stupid ligament that catches on the um, bone spur. I didn't feel any of that. And I had balance. Okay, I'm going to go now. Love you guys. Have a great day. Try not to be offended by all the political stuff I've been talking about. I mean, we just need to get back to taking care of each other. Love you guys.